sirening until the dawn on the SS will be gone. Hi, my name is Alex, I'm a musician and composer, and I have a lot of instruments. Through many birthdays and holidays, being known as a musical person, I've collected a lot of small, tiny, weird instruments that now decorate my walls. I wanna make an effort to play these instruments and maybe even get decent at some. So for this video, we're gonna be looking at the harmonica. I got this pack of five harmonicas a couple Christmases ago and I literally have not touched them since. Over the next 30 days, I'm going to see how far I can get learning this underrated instrument. So this is day one and I wanted to read up on the history of the harmonica. Inspired by East Asian instruments that were common at the time, the harmonica was invented in 1821 by Christian Friedrich Ludwig Buschmann. At least he's been widely credited for the invention. Similar instruments were found in Vienna before Buschmann started developing his and other manufacturers were building theirs around the same time as well. Christian Messner had copied the design of a harmonica that a friend had brought back from Vienna in 1830 and began producing his own harmonicas in Trossingen, Germany, which became the unofficial home of the harmonica. Messner was so successful that through a bizarre amount of scandal, Matthias Honer, a local clockmaker at the time, stole his design and began producing his own line of harmonicas. In the same place, Honer asked Messner if he could take a tour of his factory and spent so long there and took so many notes that Messner threw him out. Honer's harmonica company was founded one year later. Honer went on to supply harmonicas to the United States, and in 1920, the modern harmonica was born. The Honer brand is still around today and is one of the most credible names in the harmonica business. In America, the harmonica was adopted by a ton of different genres. Blues, jazz, and country music all found unique ways to use the harmonica by experimenting and finding different techniques in their genres. The harmonica was still thought of as a cheap instrument of the time. However, this changed in the 1930s when composers like Ray Von Williams started writing classical pieces featuring the harmonica. Monica. There's a lot of history for such a tiny little instrument, and that's super interesting. A lot more scandal than I thought there would be. Knowing how the harmonica got to where it is today has definitely got me excited to start learning. <laughs> So this is my week one check-in on the harmonica, and it's been a crazy week. The harmonica is such a unique instrument, from its build, to its tuning, to the different techniques you can use, it's definitely taking some getting used to. The embouchure was the first thing that really stood out to me. Embouchure is basically how your mouth and lips are shaped to make noise with the reeds of an instrument. Normally, the golden rule is firm corners and more loose in the middle so you can actually vibrate air. <laughs> This is the case for wind instruments like flute and clarinet, and also brass instruments like the trumpet. But with the harmonica, everything is just super loose. What you want to do is actually have both of your lips over each side of the harmonica like this. It almost looks like you're trying to eat it, which is why the harmonica got the nickname the Tin Sandwich. The Richter tuning system is easy enough to understand, but I actually find myself just figuring things out by ear a lot faster, which is really bizarre. The layout of where all the notes are is super ingenious, so you don't need to know a whole lot of theory to play tunes, which is great. I am slowly memorizing where all the pitches on the harmonica are, but a lot of the times I can take a guess to where a note is, and I'm generally in the ballpark. Being so accessible and easy to use was a key point in what made the harmonica so popular, and not needing sheet music or even lessons to become a really good player made it a lot less expensive than other instruments on the market. The only real struggle I've found this week is that I cannot bend to save my life. Bending is basically when you draw in on the harmonica and your embouchure shifts the pitch down so you can bend back up to what it should be. I'd give you an example, but I literally cannot do it. I've watched so many videos and read so many articles, but I just can't figure it out. I think I just need to wait a little while for my mouth to get used to it, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> So 
Something I really like about the harmonica is how simple it seems while being so intricately designed in order to work correctly. The harmonica is a free reed instrument, like an accordion or a concertina. Air needs to pass through the instrument in order for it to make sound. The comb is the main body of the instrument that filters air through the harmonica. On either side of the comb is a reed plate where all the reeds are located. Usually the top plate is activated by blowing and the bottom plate is activated by sucking or drawing air through the comb. Every harmonica needs to have its reeds tuned by hand. Some factories today produce harmonicas the same way they did a hundred years ago, using old equipment and using a nail file to tune the reeds. There are also a few different types of harmonica that are commonly used today. Chromatic, octave, tremolo, and chord harmonicas all do very specific things for certain genres. But the 10-hole diatonic harmonica is by far the most popular design. The 10-hole diatonic harmonica was invented with the purpose of playing melody while also accompanying yourself with chords using Richter tuning. The bottom of the harmonica is designed to play the 1 and 5 chords of the key you're in, in this case C and G while the rest of the harmonica is tuned to the C major scale with a first, third, and fifth scale degrees repeating on the blow plate, while the rest of the scale is on the draw plate. The diatonic model was adopted into early blues playing, but musicians soon found out that using a harmonica tuned a fifth below the key you were in gave you a mixolydian sound with a flat seven. For example, if you're playing a blues in E major, you're gonna wanna use a harmonica tuned to A major, which gives you a D natural on the instrument. This is regarded as playing in second position. Week two check-in and I can bend. Not all the time, but I have been able to bend. Something I'm really realizing about the harmonica the more I play it is that you really need to break it in, at least the model I have. Like every instrument, you generally want to start with a warm-up before you go into playing complicated music. If you're on guitar, you might want to tune and play a couple scales before you go to record a solo. However, some of the things I can do on the harmonica right now I could not do two weeks ago. Like, not changing any technique, it was physically impossible on this instrument. The biggest example is the two-hole draw, so the second hole out of the ten, inhaling. When I first started practicing, I couldn't make a single noise, no matter what I tried. But now, two weeks later, not really changing my technique a whole lot, I can do it just fine. I think I just needed some time to break in the reeds and holes of this harmonica. This thing was never played before I picked it up at the beginning of the challenge. It's sort of like when you restring a guitar, it takes just a little bit of time for the strings to stay in tune and get used to the body. Aside from bending, not a whole lot has happened this week. I've been learning different shuffle rhythms and blues licks. I've also been working out more tunes by ear. I think the next step is going to be sitting down and actually playing through the blues instead of just learning licks here and there. I also need to start thinking about the piece I'm gonna write. I feel like I'm in a weird spot where I know enough theory to understand everything on the harmonica, but I'm not at a physical level where I can really make music yet. I've been watching a lot of harmonica tutorials on YouTube and not a whole lot of them are helpful after the beginner level. I will continue my search though. It's still a lot of fun that you can make so much music with such a little instrument and I'm excited to see how much farther I can progress with half the challenge left to go. A huge part of the harmonica's history is how it took off in the blues genre. Half the practice I've put in during this whole challenge has been learning different licks and shuffle patterns, but another big part of the blues as a whole is improvising. I am not remotely comfortable improvising on the harmonica, but I think it's important that I try it and experiment to see what sounds I sort of naturally go towards. I think that'll give me a lot of insight into 
what I find easier to play, which will make the piece I'm writing a lot more doable. It's also important to do things you're not comfortable with, otherwise you'll never learn. So anyway, here is a chorus of the blues improvised on harmonica. Week three, this week was a little hectic, but I got a lot of good practice in. I was mainly working on cleaning up my bending and playing through the blues. So far the harmonica has been a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. I've seen a lot of different videos and courses that say, oh, learn the harmonica in 30 days, and I just don't think you can really master it. For such a small instrument, there are so many tiny little details in the playing, the embouchure, everything, that can make it a really serious instrument in the hands of a master. <laughs> Oh, so I'm out here doing some soul searching about the piece I want to write for the harmonica and You know a lot of the stuff I've been practicing is you know the blues and Different songs like that, but I'm not really feeling it. So Instead of thinking about harmonica players I wanted to think about other musicians who feature the harmonica like Billy Joel or specifically Bob Dylan came to mind so, for the song, I think I'm going to go for a 1950s folk style Bob Dylan song featuring the harmonica. So, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> With the folk sounds of 1950s America in my mind, I went to work on writing my piece. I knew I wanted the guitar to be the dominant instrument in the mix, so I spent a lot of time figuring out a solid part for it. I ended up using a playing style called Travis Picking. This was used by Bob Dylan in his song, Don't Think Twice, It's Alright. After the guitar was figured out, the lyrics came pretty naturally. Like all good folk tunes, it tells a story using strophic verses. The only part that I had trouble coming up with was the harmonica. I decided that I was going to activate my improvising skills and just see what happened. A lot of what ended up in the final recording was the first take on the harmonica, including the solo. <laughs> Week four check-in. This week went pretty well. A lot of the same, playing the blues and learning different songs. Like I said last week, I feel like I've hit a plateau with my progress where I know enough about music to understand everything I'm doing, but I don't have enough physical proficiency at the instrument to really explore or take myself much farther. Usually when I set out to learn an instrument, or anything really, the first thing I want to do is find a good teacher. Having a good instructor to help guide you through the process of learning something can really speed up your progress and help you avoid a lot of the pitfalls common in beginners. Because the harmonica is a bit more niche of an instrument than something like a trumpet, I haven't been able to find an actual teacher to help me through the challenge. As I continue my practice, I'm definitely going to look for a teacher to help take me to that next level in my playing. So here's the finished piece. I really tried to channel my inner Bob Dylan and I think it's pretty apparent in the arrangement. I also decided to make the song a ballad about the sea. I've had sea shanties on my mind lately, so that makes sense. Watch my other video for that. So without further ado, this is the SS Will Be Gone. <laughs>
I often stay awake at night Wondering what could have been And then I see the morning light And I know I can't pretend I crack the window and feel the breeze And suddenly my mind is on the seas With Captain John and Paul and Tom And the SS will be gone The ship she was built so strong And the crew so inspired Feared on every sea we sailed on Until we all retired Those times seemed so long ago They were the best I've ever known Pirating until the dawn On the SS will be gone We're sailing down the shore When the captain called all hands Another ship we were to board But the day had other plans When we thought we had them by surprise Their cannons turned to meet our eyes Half the crew was dead and gone Captain John and Paul and Tom The other half will sing their song Of the SS We'll be gone I really like how it turned out. It sounds like a real song, not just something that was written for a challenge, which is great. I definitely think the harmonica is gonna start showing up in more of my compositions. It's just such a versatile instrument and the timbre is just awesome. I learned a lot this month and I'm happy that I finished the challenge. But what did you think? Was my progress up to par? Did you like the song? Was this video too long? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to my channel to know when my next video comes out. Like this video if you liked it and thanks for watching.